Welcome to The Park. This is a short horror game where you play as a woman looking for her son in an amusement park. As always, if you'd like to play this game for yourself, you'll find some more information on how you can do so in the description. And of course, it's a short story-driven game, so there's going to be lots and lots of spoilers. So, you've been warned. I've only played for a couple minutes so far just to make sure the game works, so this is going to be almost an entirely blind playthrough. Let's jump right in. In my heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. Where's Mr. Bear? I haven't seen Mr. Bear, Callum. Stay in the car. I'll go and ask information. The first thing that hit me about this game is that it's really freaking good looking. I had a moment when I started this game where I thought, Wow, when did this happen? This level of graphic quality has become the norm in games. Isn't it amazing? It really is extraordinary. Atlantic Island Park. Attention, patrons. The park is now closed. Please make your way to the car park at your earliest convenience. Employees, prepare the park for shutdown. Callum was born the day this place opened. This is his favorite place in the world. The tribute to the untamed heart of Solomon Island and the people who used their talents to bring the dream of Nathaniel Winter to life. May this park be a place where joy and laughter are gathered and used to infect all of those who follow after. <laughs> Wait, infect? Joy and laughter are gathered and used to infect. I'm not sure the choice of word there, in fact, is really appropriate for joy and laughter. I've heard of infectious laughter, but I don't know, that just sounds insidious. Dedicated this first day of May, 1977. Yeah, it's already starting to get very dreamlike. The conversation didn't make any sense, what he was talking about, the teddy bear, and it's just very strange. Yeah, so you can shout for your son to try to find clues and try to find where he is. <laughs> My first thought was, oh, it's press X to Jason, except it's press B to Callum instead. Wait for mommy, Callum! Over here! Callum! 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 Wait up there for mommy, Callum. Over here! I can actually see him going up there. <laughs> yeah, barely in the distance. He's almost at the top. That's cool. Callum, where are you going? Catch me, mommy. I'll catch you later. I'm going to read this flyer first. Atlantic Island Park. Welcome to Atlantic Island Park. When I first came to visit Solomon Island, I felt... I fell deeply in love with its natural beauty. 
It's a scenic place and I created many of my best memories here. I wanted to create a place that captures the essence of Solomon Island. A place where families would bring their children to create memories of their own. I invite you to explore the park that we have created. From the Ferris wheel which rivals a local lighthouse for the best view of the area. To the sideshow alley where we have many fascinating games and objects from the local area to explore. Enjoy Nathaniel Winter. Chad the Chipmunk recommend- oh god. Chipmunk. Do you know what that thing makes me think of? Amusement park, chipmunk, horror game. That makes me think of, uh, what was it? Silent Hill 3? You play as the woman in an amusement park, you kind of like wake up there, and there's those creepy, like, life-sized, uh, rabbit costumes, and they're covered in blood and stuff. Ugh. For the little ones, try the Tunnel of Tales for a what does that say? Something family-friendly retelling of timeless fairy tales? For the teens, pump up your adrenaline by going through a spin cycle on the Octotron. <laughs> For the big ones, take a romantic spin on the Ferris wheel. Places to eat. Deli, diner, lobster trap. Motel. Bed and breakfast. I'm sure all of those places I will visit and they will be filled with screaming horrors. There's something special about the entrance to an amusement park. A line drawn between the real world and the world of whimsy within. On this side, the apathy of our everyday lives. And on the other, anything we might dare to dream. It's no wonder Callum ran back inside. I wouldn't want to leave either. Attention employee, the park is now closed. Have a safe journey home. that as the introduction to the the nightmare realm the nightmare version of the amusement park the fact that you're on an escalator and you can't really move and then it happens and then you just keep going going up and up it's like it's forcing you into it could I go back if I wanted to no of course not It's easy to get lost here. So that's where we are. Sideshow Alley is just to the right. Ferris wheels all the way forwards, but you gotta go around to get to it. Wait for mommy! Callum! Wait, Callum! Oh, is that Callum over there? By the map? Is that you, Callum? Get back here! Stop! Kill him! God, that kid is fast. Where's he going? He's not gonna go into the, the mouth of that thing, is he? Nah, he went off to the left. I could just chase after him right now, which is probably what I should do, but I want to take a look around this place first. See if there's any like notes to pick up or something. Nah, I can't go inside there. No, I think I just have to follow him. All right, come back here. Mommy needs to see you, Callum. This way. Just heard something rustle. Killian is Satan's whore. What the 
hell's Carrie Killian? Callum? This way, mommy. Oh yeah, I forgot this game actually has an, an actual body that you can look down at, which is really rare in games actually. Usually you look down and there's nothing. I think this belongs to Kelm. Ran so fast he lost his shoe. Or maybe the shoe monster got him. Oh, look at that happy thing that's smeared with a uh, vaguely reddish fluid. Hmm. Chad the Chipmunk, huh? Just a drunk guy in a suit. Chad the Chipmunk welcomes you to Atlantic Island Park. Chad can be seen in daily ice sculpting shows in the following locations. Blah, 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 blah. Chad the Chipmunk, worst in class. Chad can't even seem to pass. Chad gets angry, likes to fight. Chad is beaten every night. Chad will have a dead-end job. Chad will die a useless slob. Callum, stay where you are! Over here! Oh, restroom. But first... I wonder what this is. My god, it's so tiny. Purchase the land on Sullivan Island for a pittance, I might add. Whatever old Archie something did to the local... Can I say like a translation of this? That's not so tiny. It's really hard to read. Slamming doors, locking shutters the moment I arrived on the island. Okay, so this is the person that bought the land for the park, I guess, and I guess the locals didn't like him. My lawyers had arranged everything in advance, but the uh, realtor still had to come and deliver the keys to me personally. He took it upon himself to offer me another warning. I don't know what you're planning to do with this land, Mr. Winter, but the soil here is bitter with a curse carried from the old country. Old Man Henderson, he did terrible dark things. The land remembers, sir. Ugh. Oh god, an amusement park built on a cursed land. I dismissed him shortly afterwards, mostly amused by his pathetic attempts at warning me off. I have a great vision for this place, and the will to see that vision through to the very end. Atlantic Island Park. The name is perfect, and I cannot imagine it being anything else. This is the start of something amazing. I like that. An amusement park built on a cursed land. It's so Callum, freaking creepy. Where are you? Come on this way. Uh was that handle smeared with blood? Is that their blood or like rust? Stop, Callum! to go Callum stay where you are oh is he in the boat he's in the boat you uh, come back here the love tunnel or whatever this is is only for adults you're not an adult come on mommy hold on hold on hold on get in
Near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter, his wife and his two children. A boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel. They were very poor and had very little to bite or sup. What will become of us? The woodcutter asked his wife one night. I tell you what, husband. We will take the children into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow and abandon them there. No, my wife. I cannot do that, said the man. Then we will all four starve, you fool. Hansel and Gretel overheard their parents talking, and Gretel began to weep. Do not fret, Gretel, Hansel said. He crept out of the hut and gathered white stones from the ground to fill his pockets. The next morning, the woodcutter leads the children into the forest. Before they leave, their mother gives them a slice of bread and warns them that they will get no more food that day. Clever Hansel leaves a trail of white stones behind them as they pass into the woods. When their father leaves them, the children wait a while, then follow the trail back to their parents' house. After receiving a thorough scolding from their parents for getting lost in the woods, the children are sent to bed without any supper. Hansel tried to sneak out and collect more white stones, but found that the door was locked. Tomorrow I will take them into the woods myself, the wife told the woodcutter. In the morning, their mother gave them a slice of bread and led them deep into the forest once again. Hansel broke his bread into pieces and left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead them safely home. But hungry-eyed birds snatched up the breadcrumbs and his trail was destroyed. Alan, why did you go? Parents, Alan, and you unable go? to find the trail. Oh my god, those echoes. The children wandered in the forest for three days. The children stumbled into a clearing with an exceedingly strange house. Its walls were made of gingerbread, and its windows were panes of clear sugar. Hansel, desperately hungry, ran forward and began to nibble on the walls. Nibble, nibble, little mouse. At my house. An old woman emerged from the house, sniffing the air and peering around with cloudy eyes. Oh, you dear children, who brought you here? Just come in and stay with me. No harm will come to you. But Hansel and Gretel stayed back, for the old woman reminded them of their cruel mother. Come, children, don't be afraid. I have something for you. The old woman offered them two enormous lollipops. The children took them and began to eat. You see, nothing to fear here. Come inside, the old woman urged, and the children, still licking their sweets, followed. Is something the house, bumping at the underside the of this? Woman changed. She something in the water? Into a cage and put Gretel to work, sweeping and cleaning her hut. Your brother will make a good mouthful, the old witch told Gretel. Once he is fattened up, I shall feast upon him. Time passed, and poor Hansel refused to eat, fearing the day that the witch would eat him. Looks like we're almost the out of here. The witch, for her part, 
grew impatient. Today, I will cook and eat your brother, Gretel. Climb inside and light the oven. But Gretel pretended not to understand. Uh, I do not know how. Where is the opening? Fool, the old witch said. The opening is here. And she moved to show Gretel. Seizing her courage, brave Gretel gave the witch a shove and the old crone tumbled forward into the oven. Gretel slid a large iron bolt over the door to the oven. Gretel freed her brother Hansel and together they lit a fire beneath the oven. And though she screamed and begged, the children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled and the witch was cooked. What an uplifting story. And then, because even children can't survive on sweets, they divided up the body of the old witch and ate her. Good for those children. Little murderers. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> oh, God. Alright, that's really fucking creepy. Please let me off now. Okay, I do have a serious question, though. Oh my god, you can ride the swan again? Please, no. A question I have is, obviously, Callum went in there, and he would have had to have come out the other side. So, instead of going in, guaranteeing that I would go at the same pace as him and never catch up to him, why didn't I just wait here? I mean, I'm sure the game doesn't allow you to, but wouldn't that make the most sense, just wait for him to come out? Is that from over here? Where did you go? <laughs> Was that even Callum? Sounds like it's coming from Hansel and down Gretel. here. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. Those poor children. The whole world against them. The forest, the birds, the old witch, even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister, hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry, looking for our own house made of candy. Looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. So it sounds like she and Callum weren't too well off. I guess they were struggling to... to get by. Where are you? Another accident. This place. to hear it, I guess. <laughs> a giant teddy bear with a knife through its eye. Despite the constant interruptions to work, Atlantic Island Park will be opening on time. The governor is booked to cut the ribbon, so the only real question is whether we will have any customers. I'm not truly worried. The customers will come out of simple curiosity. I deduced what was needed from the band writings of Archie Henderson. It's astonishing to think that 
a resonance? Resonance of positive emotions can be used to fuel such a process. Henderson himself chose to use negative, and that caused some of the taint that still lingers in this place. I will not make his mistakes. Very soon I will know if this has all been for nothing. Resonance of positive emotions can be used to fuel such a process. So they're trying to bring positivi positivity to this supposedly cursed place. Something up there. Watching me. Come back, Callum. Mother Duck said quack, 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 quack. This old thing used to make the blood run to my head. It'd make me dizzy. The guy just snapped. Those poor kids. Eyewitness report, Atlantic Island Park incident. Officer on duty, Sheriff F. Bannerman. Uh, Norma Creed was the witness. Statement. We were waiting for our turn on the ride. Frank, me, and the boys. This fellow in the chipmunk suit is making an ice carving while people took photographs. Lawrence wanted to go over to him, but I've always been a bit wary of those suits. They give me the creeps. It's silly, I know. Anyway, the chipmunk man, he was carving and picking away at the ice. And at first we thought he was making some animal, like a tiger or lion. But as more and more ice fell away, when you first looked it was like a human face, smiling out of that block of ice. The more you looked at it, the more you saw that there was something not quite right about their proportions. Something unnatural that made your heart begin to beat just a little bit faster. Like you were prey, and that thing in the ice was a hunter. But then these teenagers walked up and one of them made a face at the carving, and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit. And then, well, he went berserk. For a few moments it was chaos. Everybody was running away from the guy, who had one of the teenagers on the ground, and he was stab, stab, stabbing with the ice pick, and blood was spraying, and people were s screaming, and Frank and I had the kids, and we were dragging them away as fast as we could. And the last thing I saw, before Frank dragged me away, was that the eyeball of one of those poor kids had landed on the ice sculpture, making the horrible creature look more or less alive. Ugh. Come to mommy, Callum. Follow the trail. A trail of garbage? Well, I guess I need to go that way then, but hold on. Can I ride this ride? No. Okay, good. Oh, wait. I can? Do I want to? Hmm. Huh. How much can we slow it down? Can I stop it? Okay, there we go. So there's like three ways to exit out of here, huh? The way I came, and then there's that way. Just looks like it goes up the Ferris wheel, and then there's this way. 
Hold on, before I actually ride it, though, can I, like, look through these things? Nope. Alright, let's go for a ride, I guess. Wee! I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm looking for my son, so this does not seem very helpful. This thing's getting awfully fast. Side of the booth. Yes. It looked like the same person that I saw. The, the huge. It, it looked like a small version of the huge person that I saw. Or the huge thing. I'm not sure I should call it a person. Put this back the way I found it. Get fast. Okay. No, I'm not gonna ride that thing again. Treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled, red, bawling thing and I thought. Is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. They shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. And one thing I want to mention is that uh, there's a lot of games that have you playing as like a dad searching for, searching or trying to save their children. It's kind of nice to have a game where you're playing as a woman trying to search or, or save her child. Not that it's exactly the most unique of stories, but it's nice for a little bit of a change of pace, you know? Oh, there we go. This is much easier to read than the other ones. This person has really neat handwriting. I thought working in the park for a summer would be a lot of fun, but the end of season here really drags. There aren't that many tourists around, and so most of the staff spend their days standing around gossiping. And most of that gossip is about Chad. I mean, Steve. See? Even I'm starting to call him Chad, and I went to school with the guy. It's that goddamn suit. In the beginning, it was a laugh. Steve the local lush as Chad the chipmunk. Child-friendly mascot at Atlantic Island Park. Lock up your daughters and all of that. But the more he wears that suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first it was little things, like refusing to change out of the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. But then I saw him at Susie's diner, still wearing it, and it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained, discreetly, to park management about the smell, and I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter, the owner, one day. But nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by. And apparently Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time I saw him puking up in a gutter outside the... Psycoil station? Because he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture. Those shapes he makes in the ice, though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, lucky me, and he just hung around for a while. I couldn't really tell because of the suit, but it seemed like he was just staring at me. 
sizing me up. Eye-fucking me. Whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted, and he just stood there, not saying anything. Eventually, I called my supervisor, and when he came by, Chad, Steve, wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing. So, here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that chipmunk suit ever again. Laura Henman. Callum! Oops. Oh, fuck! <laughs> oh, first I pressed the wrong key to exit out of the note, and then that. It's still there. Uh, I can't go inside, can I? No. It just makes the chipmunk even creepier. So the suit smells like, uh, like a, what, a cadaver, a dead body? A rotting carcass? Maybe Chad or Steve had been dead inside of the suit a long time. That's why I never took it off, because he was the suit. What kind of creature is this to have an amusement park? This is so freaking creepy. Ah, bumper cars. I remember that being listed on the map. Constant crashes and 80s music. I guess it floats someone's boat. So where have we been? We've been to the Tunnel of Tails. To the Octotron, and we're about to go to the bumper cars. So there's still like four more rides after that, I think. Seems like we're going to visit every single ride. You can't really play bumper cars, though, without other people playing. Can I actually get in one of these things? Nah. I really like the sound design. The eerie creaks and wind. I do want to look around because I feel like there might be a note in one of these cars or something, you know? Something to find. Oh! That one's got power. Accident report. Employee Francis DeFresne. Time and date, 25th of October 1976. Labor working on the crane. Supervisor Richard Stapleton. Witness Lawrence Creed. Michael Edgeworth. Brief description of the accident or incident. During the transport of the bumper cars into the arena, one of the straps attaching the load to the truck came untied, causing a cascade of bumper cars um, onto Francis, who was standing direct uh, directing the driver. Francis was crushed by the weight of the cars. Francis was killed. Did the injured employee see a doctor? Yes. If yes, did you file an employer portion, employer's portion of a worker's compensation form? Yes. Supervisor's comments. Dexter, the truck driver, claims to have seen someone on the back of the load undoing the straps. Nobody else reported seeing that. The sheriff has requested that Dexter provide them with urine samples. Could have been done to prevent it. Uh, double checking of the straps after transit should be mandatory, and drug screenings for all drivers. Has the unsafe condition been corrected? No. Additional comments. 
the local laborers are very superstitious, and this hasn't helped. Some of them are refusing to return to work until we have someone from the local church walk the park and exercise the bad spirits. are supposed to be able to go that fast. Hey, wait a minute. That's the teddy bear. Callum's teddy bear? Screaming baby, and it sounded like it came from up here. It's a matter of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she just gets some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. But instead, my mouth said, Yes, Sheriff. Well, this Ferris wheel should give me the best view of this place possible. I was thinking the Ferris wheel might be the last thing we go to. It looks like we're about to go there right now. Continually delayed by the incompetence of the builders. The problem is that they are locals, and so they believe a lot of the rumors about what Old Man Henderson used to do here. They grew up on those tales. Every time a bolt comes loose or a wrench goes missing, those fools are crossing themselves against the black magic. Of course, that is why I chose this site over all the other potentials. Sullivan Island is a nexus for dark energies, and the thought of all that power just dissipating beneath the earth here makes my skin crawl. I called in a few favors back in Brooklyn and got someone at the local ac what? Acad academy? Academy. To see, I was trying to go with like academic. Close. At the local academy to see if they had any interesting books about local history. Turns out they do. And it turns out that Old Man Henderson has some pretty strong connections to the Brooklyn crowd. Perhaps something he wrote will help me find the piece of the plans that I'm missing. Wait, this part's... Uh, I'm really curious about this part. That's why I chose this site over all the other potentials. Solomon Island is a nexus for dark energies. So wait, because it's a nexus for dark energies, that's why the place was chosen? Or do they mean they chose this place because it's superstitious and so it was very, very cheap? Did they choose it because they wanted it to be cursed? Because they wanted to use the dark energies or something? They wanted to utilize it? Or simply because the dark energies mean it's, you know, people think it's cursed so it's cheap? They say the thought of all that power, the dark energy, just dissipating beneath the earth here makes my skin crawl. Does that imply that they don't want it to just dissipate? They want it to... They want to capture it? I don't know, I've got a feeling the park owner wanted this land for more than just building a really nice amusement park. Alright, well... 
I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, so far, I quite like it. Yeah, it's... It's creepy. It looks really good. I like the voice acting, and I'm really curious where the story's gonna go. It's this... This nightmarish, surrealistic... Dream world in an amusement park. And so far, it's stayed away from being too cheesy. I mean, the life-size teddy bear with a knife through the eye in the driver's seat, that was a little bit too cheesy. <laughs> but other than that, I really like it. So, I hope you've enjoyed as well, and I'll be back soon.